The honorary degree will now be conferred. Mr. President, will you present the honorary degree candidate, Daryl Duke? Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present Darrell Duke, a distinguished Canadian who has spent his life enriching ours. As a writer, producer, director, and executive, he has helped to define film and television in this country, compelling all to believe in its power to educate, inform, and entertain. Throughout a stellar career spanning 50 years and encompassing major networks and film studios here and abroad, Darrell Duke has brought his boldness of vision and unerring instincts to a remarkable number of superior productions. These include This Hour Has Seven Days, Quest, Close Up, I Heard the Owl Call My Name, for which he won the Christopher Award, and The Silent Partner, which received the Canadian Film Award's Best Director and Best Picture Award. Admired at home for his acuity and originality, he has attained equal fame and respect for his work in U.S. television and film industry. His gifts evident in creations like Payday, which received the National Society of Film Critics Special Award, The Thornbirds, for which he received Emmy and Directors Guild of America nominations, and The Day the Lion Died, which was honored with an Emmy Award. Such achievement, would be enough for most people. But Darrell Duke has always taken an abiding interest in the arts at home, believing wholeheartedly in the importance of locally produced television and film to the cultural life of a community. Known as a man who translates thought into action, he founded and launched CKVU-TV in 1976. And for the next 12 years, in a sustained act of imaginative daring, he took British Columbians on an inimitable adventure with live daily shows and weekly entertainment pro programs. The success of CKVU-TV was a tribute to his integrity, foresight, and deep commitment to the people of this province. Recently, Darrell Duke received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Directors Guild of Canada. This great honor reminds us that he has served the arts long and well, his vision has set new standards for film and television production. His talent has given pleasure to millions around the world. And his example has inspired many to follow in his footsteps. Today, it is our privilege to recognize his lasting contributions to the cultural life of this province and this country. Mr. Chancellor, I ask on behalf of the Senate of this university that you now confer upon Darrell Duke the degree Doctor of Fine Arts, honoris causa. Darrell Duke, by the virtue of authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, honoris causa. Dr. Duke will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President Academic.
It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. Darrell Duke for his convocation address. Dr. Duke. Chancellor Wong, President Stevenson, members of the Senate of Simon Fraser University, distinguished guests, faculty members, graduates in the Faculty of Arts, I wish to thank you for the great honor you have bestowed upon me this afternoon. I first went into this wonderful business with a written word and the visual image in June of 1950, a few weeks after graduating from UBC. I have worked at my endeavors in broadcasting and film for more than the last half century. <clears throat> I have been blessed with many dear friends and colleagues over these years and have seen many continents while being able to maintain my connection with Vancouver and with Canada. Please know that today you have given my journey of, li of my life and, and the work I have undertaken over these many years of reality and a recognition for which I am deeply grateful. I wish to, to congratulate all the graduates of the Faculty of Arts who are here this afternoon at this convocation. I'm honored to be linked, even to a small degree, to your memories of this spe very special day in your lives. I wish today's graduates as much good fortune as I was blessed to receive. That this honor comes to me from Simon Fraser University here in the city I call home makes this ceremony and this degree doubly appreciated and meaningful. Simon Fraser has always been a place that has been supportive in all my endeavors, right back to when the university first wrote, without hesitation, wrote in support of our application to launch CKVU TV in the mid-70s. It wrote to the CRTC uh, in the most glowing terms, and its students came to our assistance in rounding up public letters of uh, support to our application. And the, in my relationship to the university has continued through to my delivery with their support of the Spry Lecture of a couple of years ago. While I have wandered the world like a gypsy, Vancouver has been, throughout my working life, a continuing preoccupation and a kind of spiritual magnet which has drawn me back time and time again. The resonance of the word home has never rung more clearly than it does today when I receive this degree among so many friends and colleagues. The knowledge I wanted somehow to spend my life in film began at a very young age. Two very magical and remarkable films came into my life and changed it forever. The first was French director Marcel Carnet's Les Enfants du Paradis. Made in France with great difficulty during the Nazi occupation, Les Enfants somehow got to a movie theater here in Vancouver in the late 40s, starring the great French actor Jean-Louis Barrault and the ever-tempting, beautiful actress Arletti. I emerged onto Granville Street after the movie was finished in a complete dream. The fluid, operatic, emotional scenes of Les Enfants du Paradis were unlike anything I'd ever encountered in those years in a very tame wasp Vancouver of some four to 500,000 people with the movie theater showing, as they did, very predictable, sanitized product from Hollywood. The impact of Les Enfants was immediate, and I'm sure that it made me see the world and my work differently, even down to the way I staged many years later uh, scenes for uh, when I directed dramas such as The Thornbirds in the uh, 1980s. The second film which put its stamp upon me was a feature-length documentary called Fires Were Started by the British documentary uh, director Humphrey Jennings. Jennings was killed in 1949 doing a documentary for the UN in Greece. Fires Were Started stands as one of his masterworks. The film chronicled the life of a fire crew during the London Blitz. Its structure, emotion, the fact that the makers of the film had the courage to give one of its characters a poem by John Donne to recite after the death of one of the crew members all came together to make a very strong effect upon me. Fires were started 
led me without hesitation when the chance arose during my last year in 1950 at UBC to go east at the first opportunity to the National Film Board of Canada and enter the world of Canadian documentary film. If I am here this day because of my early attraction to two films, I am also here because of two men. If the paper can come apart. The first was one of Canada's best poets and a professor in the English department at UBC. His course in creative writing was the sole focus in the arts in the Vancouver of the day. His name was Earl Burney. He became my mentor, my friend, and my inspiration. Earl was a hard taskmaster who allowed no fat nor false emotion to creep into one's work. He was also relentless in pushing me to publish the poetry I was writing at the time and have it published in little magazines across Canada. He also steeled us to face rejection, for he knew we were going out into a world with almost no support of the arts. There was no CBC television, not in Vancouver, not anywhere. No Telefilm Canada, no CRTC, no funding for the arts. All that lay in the future. The other man was a producer at the National Film Board. His name was Guy Glover. Somehow, Guy found his way to those poems I had published. And out of the blue in my last weeks at UBC, he wrote a letter from far off Ottawa to say my poems had a great visual sense and was I open to a job at the NFB. As I was facing immediate unemployment as soon as I was out of university, I could not get a letter back to Guy Glover fast enough. It was one of the miracles in life that I have never forgotten. Just as in my travels and my work abroad, I have never forgotten my home and country. British Columbia made me, and whether I was working in Egypt, or for a year in China, or sitting on the edge of the Adriatic with President Tito of Yugoslavia, Vancouver was always a part of my landscape. And one of the most influential books I recall of those beginning years was The Undiscovered Country by the eminent Canadian journalist Bruce Hutchison. Fifty-five years later, I look around and I say, we are still an undiscovered country. We may know what the rivers and the mountains look like, but we do not know our own people, their stories, their history, their music. And I wonder, does it need a revolution? Does it need an order and council? Does it need a whole new way of thinking and, uh, and reordering of priorities? To the graduates of 2004, I wish you well, and I hope in your future, while you are occupied with all your different dreams and endeavors, that you do not forget to make Canada known as a country rich with great diversity, a country that has a million Chinese, hundreds of thousands who speak Spanish, Hindi, Vietnamese, Arabic, and Farsi. It is to you we now look to ensure that our people do not live as exiles in their own country. I ask this of you as you go forward today, that you will not have to ask of yourselves, as I now ask of myself and those of us who were once young and are young no longer, did we do enough? Good luck and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Duke.